All right, good morning. Welcome to In the Trenches with David Cohen. Today's topic is going to be sarcoid. This is not an uncommon illness, and it has really a variety of presentations. This is one of these conditions which really could, could really show up on the differential diagnosis of a lot of symptoms. Interesting, sarcoid, sarcoid was named after sarcoma. That's how they got the name. And when the disease was described by Jonathan Hutchinson in the late, uh, late 18, 1800s, uh, the, the lesions there, what they, they found, they resembled the sarcoma. Now the lesion and biopsy is a non-caseating granuloma. And sarcoid could affect a lot of systems. So let's go through the systems it, it affects. The most common is the lungs. The second most common is the skin. But other symptoms, other systems that could involve, it could involve cardiac, hepatic, renal, GU, and you can get a small fiber neuropathy. calcium and it also can involve the musculoskeletal system so basically sarcoid could involve all organs the lungs are involved 90 percent of the time so usually you see the lungs but not a hundred percent so the absence of pulmonary involvement does not rule out sarcoid classically the the classic staging of sarcoid for the lungs stage stage one you have hyalur nodes bilateral Stage two, you have hyalur nodes plus interstitial lung disease. More common actually in the upper and middle lobe. Stage three, no nodes plus interstitial lung disease. And stage four, fibrosis. And sometimes sarcoid progresses, usually it doesn't, and it could spontaneously remit. And interestingly, sarcoid and pulmonary function test also involves the airways, and you could get a combined mixed obstructive and restrictive pattern, unlike other interstitial lung diseases. And, and with sarcoid, sarcoid's one of the interstitial lung diseases you could actually diagnose via transbronchial biopsy. Most of them you can't, but you can with sarcoid. Now, if you're talking about pulmonary sarcoid, there's a variant called numular sarcoid, and this presents with pulmonary nodules all over. Normally, you have a patient who has pulmonary nodules all over. You don't think of sarcoid. Um, but there is this numular sarcoid variant. Lungs are the most common. Now, the second most common, the second most common, I don't want to put the eyes also, the second most common uh, organ involved in sarcoid is the skin. And classically, you have these erythematous waxy plaques. Two specific things you can see that you have to think of sarcoid. Number one is lupus pernio. This is more commonly seen in, in chronic sarcoid, not acute, often African American. Uh, women, they have this violaceous uh, pigmentation around the, the external nares. It's called lupus pernio. Okay, the other, and this is erythema nodosum. Uh, erythema nodosum you can see with a bunch of conditions where, where often in the lower extremities, uh, these erythema, it's like a paniculitis, and it could be seen with acute sarcoid. And actually, the, there's a certain syndrome you can see with it, it's called Lofgren syndrome where you have hyalur adenopathy, enodosum, and periarthritis, often in the ankles. And that's Lofgren syndrome, and it's self-limited. And it's self-limited, it goes away, goes away on its own. That's the skin. Okay, another area you have to think of, sarcoid could involve the cranial nerves. The most common is cranial nerve seven. And it could involve the eyes, uveitis, and it could also involve the parotid glands, and somebody with a swallowed parotid gland, you have to think of sarcoid. And there's a condition called Hereford syndrome, which is uveitis, parotitis, and cranial nerve involvement. That's called Hereford syndrome, and that's also associated with sarcoid. One of the most serious organs to involve sarcoid, and, and people, uh, this is the cause of death in, in sarcoid patients who die, is the heart. And you can have sarcoid 
infiltrate in the heart. Initially, you could get a restrictive cardiomyopathy and then it could dilate. I mean, these people could have sudden death. And, you know, if you suspect this, you get an MRI on the heart. And this is clearly an indication for treatment. Sarcoid could also affect the conduction system. Hepatic, you see granulomas in the liver. Okay, so sarcoid, it's not uncommon to have a high alphos, and if you biopsy the liver, it'll be socked with non caseating granulomas, and I've, I've seen this multiple times. Um, it could involve lymph nodes anywhere. It could involve uh, uh, epitrochlear nodes. It, it, it could involve other places. I had a patient who, who presented with obstructive jaundice, and it turned out he had large portahepatis nodes, and thought was that he had lymphoma, but they biopsied him and turned out, it turned out that he had sarcoid. But normally it involves the liver. Elevated alphos is, is, is the key, very high. The kidney is interesting. First of all, you can have hypercalcemia and hypercalcemia in kidney stones, which is the most, most common manifestation. I'll discuss that in a couple minutes. But you could also have sarcoid involving the renal interstitium and the glomeruli. And I remember a patient I had about 25 years ago who actually actually had masses in both kidneys. They looked like they were sock both the tumors all over and we biopsied it. And this is somebody with no sarcoid and he had non caseating granulomas there. So the kidney can be involved in sarcoid. The GU tract, uh, it could involve that. The most common organ involved in women is the uterus. Sarcoid could involve the uterus. Um, there's something called small vessel neuropathy, which is a newer concept uh, as a cause of chronic pain. And people, you, you have to do a skin biopsy to diagnose this. This could be associated with sarcoid. Patients with sarcoid could get musculoskeletal involvement and joint pain. They could get bone, uh, they could get bone cysts. Um, and then they could have hypercalcemia or hypercalcemia. Now the mechanism is the granuloma okay, secretes the enzyme 1-alpha hydroxylase, okay, and this activates vitamin D that increased 1.5-hydroxyvitamin D3, and you resorb more calcium through the GI tract, and, uh, and um, mobilize some calcium through bone. And initially it'll cause hypercalcemia, and you can get kidney stones. Um, but you could also get hypercalcemic, and any patient who's hypercalcemic, and you don't know why, you have to think about, you have to think about sarcoid. How do you diagnose sarcoid? Normally, you have to get tissue. You know, people talk about an ACE level, and ACE level is not diagnostic. It's positive in about sixty percent. It could be elevated in other things. Often, it's drawn, but that that's not the gold standard. They used to do gallium scans, which would light up, and you know, the, 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 there were two things you would see in the gallium, the lambda and the panda sign. The panda sign and the parotids, and the lambda sign looked like, it looked like a hockey puck involving the nodes. There's something called Garland's triad, where it involved the right paratracheal node and bilateral hilar nodes. That's something that's been, uh, that's been reported uh, reported with, with sarcoid, but normally you have to get tissue and you're gonna go the easiest place. If somebody has a skin lesion, you'll biopsy that. More often than not, they wind up doing a transbronchial biopsy and, 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 and doing a lung biopsy. How do you treat sarcoid? Steroids are still the, the key treatment. You know, you don't have to load them with super high doses and then you taper them. For steroid sparing agents, methotrexate has been used. For skin and hypercalcemia, plaquenil has been used. And in some instances, they use TNF inhibitors like infliximab. That's been used also. But steroids are still, at least right now, the mainstay uh, treatment of sarcoids. So sarcoids a disease that has many flavors. The other thing I should mention, you could have a CNS sarcoid. We've seen couple patients with a change in mental status, we couldn't figure out what's going on. We wound up doing lumbar punctures and they had a lymphocytic meningitis and their CSF ACE was positive. So, you know, it's, it's, boy, there, there's, some, there's some school of thought that sarcoid may be multiple diseases. And, you know, but normally the lungs are the most common involvement. Um, and I'm gonna stop there, thank you.